Hi friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Tori and we are working on my October daily album. Today I'm actually going to be documenting two stories, story number five and story number six. I am doing two today because the back of story number four, I want it to be very, very simple and not super bulky. And for story number six, I did use my prompt jars and pulled both a theme prompt and a material technique prompt. So for story number five, I am documenting a movie night that we recently had here where we watched No One Will Save You. It's the first scary movie we've watched this October and my husband made it a point to kind of try and set up the room so that I could take a photo of it and I thought that was very sweet. So of course I had to document it. Um, and I have a big bowl of popcorn, our little feetsies next to each other, and then a screenshot of the opening title screen of the movie. So the first thing that I'm going to do is cut using my X-Acto knife a line across the foot of our bed. And I'm doing this because I made a tag that I'm going to want to put in that little kind of pocket so that it doesn't take too much away from the photo and I still have a place to add journaling since this is going to be a full page photo. And I'm gonna flip that over with my card inside it and line around where I want that pocket to be. I'm gonna use red line tape for this because I don't want the actual tag that I'm making to lift my tape runner. And since it is initially removable, um, if I push that tag in too hard, it would lift it up. So I generally pull out my red line tape and use that to outline the pocket. I'm then gonna grab my hole punch and just punch a hole so that I can later add a piece of ribbon and kind of go through some embellishments that I have to decorate this tag. This little label sticker is not a Halloween item that was in my stash, but it was in my stash, and I hardly ever use these labels, so I wanted to get that used. I also have these paper person numbers. They're gigantic, so I just colored one orange, and I'm going to place that on the bottom of my page over a round label sticker that says warm and cozy. Then I believe is when I pull out my ribbon. I'm using gauze grain ribbon, just an orange one that I got last year. I think I purchased it from Michaels. And I'm gonna staple that onto my tag and then trim down those ribbon ends so that they don't hang too much in front of my video screen. This stamp set that I'm using is from Everyday Explorers. I believe it's called All the Movies, but I could be making that up. I don't have it in front of me, so I'm not 100% sure. And I'm going to stamp a little five-star rating on my actual tag because this is where I'm gonna write like my thoughts on the movie. I personally am not a horror movie fan. I have a very, very overactive imagination and I will have nightmares for days and days and days and days and days. So I normally don't watch them and my husband has to kind of convince me to watch them with him because they are his favorite. This particular movie, it's on Hulu if you have a Hulu subscription. It was crazy. Um, it wasn't super, super scary, but it was just enthralling in like the weirdest way and there's almost no dialogue in the movie at all which just blew my mind i was completely shocked at how much i ended up liking it and i did give this four out of five stars normally with horror movies um i give them like two stars <laughs> because i'm not a horror movie girly <laughs> so i am getting my full page photo adhered back to, adhered on the back to story number four and i did pull up a piece of my paper and use my tape runner to kind of hold that back down. So I'm gonna get my holes punched and then at this time I think I'm done with this page, but I'm actually not. Um, I'm going to grab a marker and kind of color in a little bit the edges around that photo. If you look closely, you can see the page behind it. I don't want to trim any of that 
of page four off. So I'm going to grab my N49 Tombow dual brush pen and I'm just going to color those uh, edges. That way it kind of blends in and it's not super noticeable that my picture was a little bit smaller than my full page for number four, if that makes sense. And then at the end of this video, I will also come back and add a title to this page too. But I will move on and complete story number five completely, um, or think that I've completed it completely, and move on to story number six. And then I will come back to this one once I'm going and adding everything into the album. All right, so for the time being, I am done with story number five and I am going to move on to story number six. So for story number six, I did draw the prompts again for die cutting elements and pumpkins. I don't know if I said that, but those are the prompts that I drew. So I had these photos that I took Monday morning, I believe, of the kids with their journals journaling next to me while I was filling in my reading journal. And I was just in love. I thought it was so cute that they were wanting so badly to journal with me. So I took photos of that and that's what I'm documenting. And I'm just gonna use all of my die cut elements in the pumpkin theme. There was also a recent time when Oliver asked me to teach him how to draw pumpkins. So I'll probably add that into my journaling as well to bring that in additionally. So the first thing that I'm doing here is using one of my pre-prepped white pages. I'm going to use the Allie Edwards 2022 Halloween stamp. And then I'm using, I believe, Permisin and I think it's Clementine. I'm not 100% sure. It might be Apricot. I'll show the inks in a little bit. I'll do like a close up of them. But I'm using those two inks to kind of just create a little background of this stamp over and over again, the like letter paragraph stamp from that Allie Edwards stamp set. I'm doing first generation stamping, second generation stamping, and I this one I'm just kind of cleaning off the stamp. And then I ended up using Persimmon and Clementine for those ink colors, and they were both from Pink Fresh Studio. I have a, a bunch of scraps pulled out here. A couple of my Allie Edwards paper scraps. This orange piece of paper is a scrap. It's either from the Stamp Market or Concord and Knight. It was a scrap, so I'm not 100% sure, but I'm I'm sure it's at least from one of those two companies. I created another tag the exact same way that I created the tag for story number five, and I'm gonna use that to put my journaling on as well. This one I'm gonna do just a little bit differently than I did for story number five though. I'm going to have a pocket kind of behind my orange piece of paper but I'm only going to tape off two sides. I want the tag to show through both sides of the pocket. And you'll see here when I kind of dry place it out what I mean, that it goes all the way through, it just doesn't move up and down. I also have a piece of the scrap ledger paper that I used for the tags that I used my border punch that I wanted to use I think in my last video and it just didn't work. I have a scrap of that because I wanted to make sure it still worked after I was messing around trying to use it in the last video. Um, so I tested it and I really like this and I'm gonna include that. And then for my die cut elements, I'm gonna pull out my Sizzix mini die cut machine and use this Concord and Ninth die cut set. I believe it's the Playful Pumpkins and I'm going to die cut four of these pumpkins out and the pumpkin stems and kind of layer them around the bottom of my photo. Um, like I said earlier, I am using scraps. So I'm using that diamond scrap that I had and the striped scrap that I had from, 
well, it might have been my last video too that I had these scraps from. So I'm just using up those scraps and I'm really proud of myself because normally when I have a bunch of scraps, I just kind of put them in a drawer and then forget about them. So I'm glad that I pulled them out and then I use them up. I'm also pulling out two of the leaf dies so that I can use those as a little bit of space fillers on this actual page as well. The last thing that I am going to then die cut out using my mini die cutting machine is going to be the stems for each of the pumpkins. And I'm just going to be using a piece of my craft paper from my Archer and Olive Neapolitan notepad. Um, and I'm going to cut those out twice. I just stack those two pieces of paper together and just cut them out at the same time. I'm going to have to pull those apart. That way I have two of each of the sizes that I need. And as I've been cutting everything out and kind of getting it prepped, I am laying it down how I think I'll want it when I start actually gluing everything down on my spread, kind of dry fitting to see how I like it. And I really, really love the way that this looks. So I'm gonna kind of pull everything off and then try to glue it down the same way that I had it. Spoiler alert, I do not. <laughs> Things move around a little bit. I probably should have taken a photo of it, but I did not. I'm still super, super happy with the way that this came out though. So the first thing that I'm, do I'm doing is adhering those stems to each of the pumpkins to make them look more pumpkin-y. And then I am using my Pink Fresh Studio pickup tool. I don't know the official name for this, but I'll link it down below. I, I love it. It's so cute. And then the other side has a kind of piercer tool. It's not a piercer because it's got a little ball at the end, but it helps to push out your dies if you're die cutting something. And then I'm going to move on to adding my red line tape to either side of where I want my tag to lay. I almost adhere this to my background paper before <laughs> removing the liner from the red line tape but since I do use also my regular tape roller um, I managed to catch myself and just pull it right back off and then remove those liners I did a little bit ago in the video uh, pull out my Tim Holtz edge distressor I can usually never say that word <laughs> and distressed either side of that orange bar that I have so I was just kind of wiping all of the pieces of paper that came off when I did that off my desk uh, and then I am like I said going to go ahead and get the panel adhered down and just I'm going to trim off the part that's hanging over the edge after I test to make sure that my tag goes in the way that I would like it to and then I'm just gonna start adhering everything down so I've got my photo here of um, my kids and their journaling next to me I'm gonna pull my photo back up a little bit because I forgot to put that little border piece in there uh, like I said thankfully this is kind of temporary at first so I am able to just pull things back up and fix them as I need to and then I'm gonna lay out my pumpkins and figure out where I want each of them to go so I'll adhere most of these down and the very last pumpkin that I'm going to adhere, I will add a little bit of dimension to by using some foam tape. And I really like the way that that came out. That is also where I'm going to end up placing my number six for my story number six, right in the middle of that pumpkin. When I am adding these little leaves to the spread, I do end up cutting the stems off of both of them because I kind of want them to be tucked in to places. One of them I wanted to be tucked in underneath a pumpkin and then the second leaf I'm actually going to use to cover up the very 90 degree edge on top of my little border punch out. Um, so I cut off the stems to kind of have them fit a little bit more seamlessly and not stick out so much. 
I'm then grabbing the Allie Edwards numbers that I've used on several of my spreads so far and just placing that six right in the middle of my pumpkin. And then I am adding Monday's date since that's the date that I took these photos. I did mention earlier that I'll probably do a little bit of reflective journaling, um, sometimes where I was teaching Oliver to draw pumpkins and all that. But for the most part, it's just gonna be general journaling about how much I love the kids and their love for journaling with me. I'm adding the same ribbon to this tag as well. And I really like the way that the tags and the ribbon that I use on the tags kind of tie these two pages together and give a little bit of cohesiveness to both of them. Even though one of them is very dark and the other one is very light. So here is where I am looking at my spreads and decide that I wanted to add a title to our movie night and that's exactly what I'm gonna put on here using the Studio Calico kit stickers from the Halloween kit this year. I am not an orange person either, honestly, Halloween, October is the literal only time that I ever use anything orange. So I figured that if these stickers were ever going to be used, I should start using them in my album. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to use these stickers to kind of create my movie night title. Since I'm so close to the bottom edge though, I will kind of lift up my G a little bit so that the G and the H are kind of the same height. I do really like the way that this looks, though. I think it makes it super fun. After I get the title completed, the last thing I believe that I'm doing today is just using up some more of my word phrase stickers from Studio Calico. On that tag for my movie night, I did add a little sticker that said Scaredy Cat because I am a Scaredy Cat when it comes to scary movies. I thought it fit perfectly. And then on story six above the photos, I'm going to add a phrase sticker that says fun. And then underneath that, I will add one that says imagination. And then that is all I've got today for you. If you did make it to the end of my video, let me know down in the comments below if you like horror movies. And if you do like horror movies, what is your favorite horror movie? Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.